have a good feeling I'm going to get some comments telling me 10,000 photos is nothing, Z-Wade. Cram it, hater. I've used continuous modes on the Nikon Z9 probably four times on purpose. Once the day the Nikon Z9 arrived versus my Doberman Pinsir Lolly, video in the description. Once during the Sony A7R5 versus the Nikon Z9, video link in the description. Once getting a dancer doing a jump beside an oncoming train, link in the description. And here and there for creative moments like hair flying or a dress floating or falling. Every other time I've used continuous shooting, it's been accidental. Usually after demonstrating the sound, the Z9 makes at 20 or 30 frames per second and forgetting to switch back to single frame. Get to the point, Z-Wade. The point is I'm not a spray and pray shooter. One shot per scene or pose unless I notice something messing up like the model blinking or something stupid walking in the background. So that's roughly eight to 9,000 images doing what I normally do, which is everything besides sports, wildlife, or any other kind of action where you would use something besides single frame. So yes, I've learned a lot about the Nikon Z9 and the time that I've had it. And it's with this in the field real photography experience that I craft this video where I'm going to tell you what I've learned about the Z9 in the first 10,000 images. The Nikon Z9 earns its flagship status. Let me know in the comments what you expect out of a flagship labeled camera, but for me, the Nikon Z9 checks all of my boxes. It has wicked autofocus, it's fast shooting, and of course it's got a built-in grip. More importantly, I demand survivability. I have officially shot the Nikon Z9 in the rain, on sand, and the snow, in sweltering heat and bitter cold. In regards to the Z6 II, in the coldest scenarios, I've noticed perfectly fine function with a little bit of lag on the back screen and when powering on. Also with the Z6 II, occasionally when shooting in 106 degree weather, shooting 4K or really ripping off some shots, the cards will overheat before the camera. No big deal, really. The Z9, on the other hand, in my most aggressive conditions, doesn't seem to behave any differently in any regard. While I've seen it get hot to the touch during dry Kansas summer heat shooting full res, full frame video and photography, it has never once warned me about the camera or card temperature. In fact, I can't even tell you what that alert would look like on the Z9. It probably looks the exact same as the Z6-2's alert, and that's the point. But don't take this as a Z6 II having overheating issues. It totally does not. And I've had the Z6 in some real rough scenarios. But the Z9 obviously does better because I have really put this thing through some real nightmares. There are way more functions on the Z9 than most people will ever use. Depending on your philosophy on how and what you spend your money on, this could be a good or a bad thing. But complain all you want, today's industry from a business and marketing perspective it has to be this way. The Nikon Z9 is absolutely loaded. The menu is so full of stuff that it can be kind of overwhelming. Now, depending on whether you shoot in RAW and manual or JPEG or something else, you can ignore a large portion of it and other items are a set it once and leave it kind of ordeal. But even so, the things you can do if you choose to goes very, very deep. I have function buttons set that I hardly even use <laughs> just to have something assigned there. And you can assign all kinds of buttons to do all kinds of things. As daunting as it is, it's kind of awesome. And sorry, Nikon isn't going to make a simplified camera and charge you only for the features you're going to use, even though I'd totally sign up for that. The Nikon Z9 continues to improve. When I shot my Nikon Z9 for the first time, I was already blown away. I remember thinking the only thing that could be better is the eye tracking being more centered so that it always grabs the pupil instead of sometimes grabbing the eyelash or the eyelid. I even specifically noted in my Canon R5 review that it was the only camera with eye pupil tracking. Wrong. Nikon fixed that in a firmware update. <laughs> I'm not sure which one, but I haven't missed a pupil since January of 2023, I think. It's hard to identify at what point Nikon fixes because they are cranking out firmware for the Z9 and when they say, we fixed an issue when focusing in low contrast conditions, it seems like they forget to mention that they make everything else better too. Stickiness, accuracy, speed, functionality, improvements all over the place regularly. Basically, it's boiling down to Nikon taking the Z9 very seriously and treating the system with a lot of respect. Every time I think the Nikon Z9 can't get any better for the work that I do, it does. The Z9 has way more processing power than you'll probably ever use, so I imagine we are just scratching the surface of its true capabilities. The Nikon Z9 will literally do anything. I feel like the Nikon CEOs and engineers had a conversation that went a little something like this. What do you want this camera to specialize in? Yes. It's true that the Z9 is the top choice from Nikon for sports, action, and wildlife, duh, but it also does the best at everything else too. 
Traditionally, I have always kept a 24 megapixel camera on standby for low light work because lower megapixels are more forgiving at higher ISOs, right? Wrong. The Z9 has a uniquely nice grain structure at higher ISOs, it, and it does such a good job at finding focus in these conditions that I regularly ask myself why I even have a Nikon Z6 II at the making of this video. With my current arsenal of equipment, the Z9 does better at what it shouldn't than cameras that should do better don't. That sentence makes a lot less sense than this point. The Nikon Z9 pretty much kills every Nikon camera at every genre. The 45 megapixel sensor is not as sharp as the Z7 II, but it's a good thing. If you get real obnoxious, and I mean real obnoxious, with overanalyzing a landscape image or a portrait, you may find that technically the Z7 II may be a bit sharper, even though there is a lie, technically, going around that there isn't a difference between the highest resolution Z9 image, which is a lightly compressed RAW, and a true uncompressed RAW out of a similar 45 megapixel Z7 II image. I actually prefer the Z9 file. In landscapes, it's harder to see because they tend to be a little more busy, but in portraits, it's more obvious being close up and drawn into someone's facial features. If you get close and you compare the two cameras, the Nikon Z9 is just that much more flattering to use on someone's face. It's just a little less sharp. The image does not lack in sharpness at all, okay? The Z9 is crazy detailed, but it's just ever so slightly easier to work with in post and just more clean which I appreciate because I notice these things and whenever I do notice them, I can't unnotice them. I know pixel peeping is stupid and you probably won't notice or care, but this video is about what I've learned about the Nikon Z9. Do not let this video sway you from picking up a Z7 II. It's a great camera and I enjoy the hell out of it whenever I owned it. In the comments, tell me something that surprised you about the Z9. The Z9 rarely misses a shot. When my Z9 first arrived, it was rare that it missed a shot in one of its many tracking modes, uh, but after the first firmware update that was released during my ownership, I seriously can't recall a single WTF focus moment. There have been some rare scenes where I would expect any camera to struggle with tracking, and I'm not talking about single point AF here, but if you can work a scene's lighting where you're not shooting directly into the brightest sun or shooting in pitch black, you probably won't miss. And by the way, Nikon has improved performance in those two terrible situations via firmware. This has opened up my world to just holding down back button focus and going. I'm getting more unique angles faster and more accurately than ever before. I have noticed that I have almost tripled the amount of images I shoot and keep, which is more work to do in post, but a better value for my portfolio and the people and projects I work on. I have more incentive to like hop on the ground and hit like a low angle whenever I can do it in like four seconds with no questions. I'm literally rolling around like a ninja out here with my Z9 y'all. It just works. I can count on it as an extension of my ideas and I've yet to be like, oh dang, if only I would have known it had missed, I would have reshot it. No, I'll never get the opportunity again it's gone forever no it just it just does what it needs to do the files are incredible i kind of touched on this a moment ago uh whenever i was talking about the texture of the files compared to the z72 and the grain structure at higher isos but i have to add to the quality of the files as a whole it's pretty typical to see a kind of an ugly color cast in raw files sometimes it's really apparent on portraits with skin tones in a true raw image the skin may take on a yellowish tint from time to time well, it's way better on the Z9 than the Z7 II. It may be subjective, but I feel like Z9 raw images are just more real to the scene. I have to also add that the headroom that you have on the Z9 files are massive. Typically, if you take an underexposed image and try to bring it way up, at some point it's going to get dirty, or you may ruin your shadows with dreaded splotchiness. Or on the reverse side of that, you may ruin your highlights trying to recover them and you'll get that wicked splotch or a treacherous moiré in the sky. You almost have to be intentionally trying to ruin a Z9 image to actually ruin it. I'm not even sure it's possible if you have an ounce of experience. I surely haven't yet and I once shot in a dark office with a cell phone to light the scene, which the cell phone did a terrible job at, but I still had passable images. Point is, you have an insane amount of headroom to compensate for your shortcomings or get really silly with your edits, and you know I like that idea. Also, the files are just super clear and beautiful and colorful, but that's pretty much all Z cameras in my opinion. Guys, I absolutely love the Z9. It's the best camera I've ever owned, and it's way overkill in all the right ways. Let me know in the comments what you've learned about the Nikon Z9, and stay sharp, YouTube.